So uh, as most people know, game development is hard, right? So there's always a challenge. Um, but it's us wanting to, to give that variety and, and have uh, the ability for different people to kind of make and tailor their vault hunter the way that they want to. And that makes it easier for us to understand like, okay, we know that we need to make sure that these four play well together and that there's, there's a lot of that different variety. So it was really important that we have um, some of our, our past um, type uh, archetypes represented so that we can represent and have that, that different types of balance. So we have Amara, who's the siren. She has some of the similar abilities that we've seen in the past from like Maya. Um, but we also have new things, like she's doing a phase slam or she's doing like the uh, phase cast where she shoots everything out. And Zane, um, we see a couple things similar to, to how some of the past characters have acted, but um, you know, having the drone and the digiclone where you can swap back and forth is really cool and, and really, really dynamic in the way that, um, you know, if you just compare him to Amara herself. And then, like you talked about Mose, Mose now has this huge digitized iron mech that she can drop down, the iron bear. She can drop down and have, you know, you can adjust the two hard points. And, uh, you know, there's actually three different trees, but you can augment through, you know, up to six hard points based on how you're leveling up throughout the system so they all play very differently so that even even my modes will be very different from your modes and we want to make sure that people can build the kind of ball turner that they want that caters to their play style so you know borderlands at its core has always been a, a co-op experience that we really wanted people to be able to engage and play with their friends or play with people online um you know we have couch co-op we still have that in borderlands 3 because it's always been important since day one in the franchise um, so there's there's a multitude of ways that, that we that we're doing that in the new entry. Um, if you saw the theater presentation, you got to see we all we're uh, allowing people to kind of send items through the mail system. Now. So if if you find something really cool or something that somebody that you know a friend of yours might enjoy, um, you can send it to them. Um, there's also um, dynamic missions uh, that we call the rare spawns, uh, the bounty board that you can go to in Sanctuary Three, our hub, and our friend may have seen this type of enemy in the game, and now it will populate in our game a dynamic mission, and we can now go and hunt. Um, that's just kind of some of the way that we're nudging people and showing them, hey, there's a larger community out there, even if I'm playing solo. I personally, I enjoy playing solo, and there's a lot of players who do. Um, but we want to show, like, hey, there's other people out there. You know, like We also got to look at the vending machine, right? In the past, those have always been just populated by the system, but now I could go in my own solo game and see, oh, you know, one of my friends from my friends list, there's an item in, in this vending machine because they sold it in theirs. So, you know, we, we started off, we wanted to make this the best cooperative experience possible, even when you're playing alone. Um, Mike, you mentioned narrative has been not big in loot based games, but Borderlands seems to take the initiative and, and take that step. Uh, is narrative a big part of Borderlands 3? Yeah, I think so. Uh, we have a great writing team, our co leads, Danny Homan and Sam Winkler. And, uh, you know, our writing department has just been stellar with trying to weave all of the different lore and, and, and the canon that is, you know, the game is deep now. Um, you know, Borderlands 1 came out back in 2009. And there's a lot of pieces, uh, plus we also have tales and things like that that we're putting together. There's all these characters that the fans in the community really love that we want to make sure that we build on those things. So in this latest entry, you know, we have the Calypso Toys. We're chasing them across the galaxy, trying to keep them from opening all of these vaults and, and kind of getting this ultimate power uh, so that we can stop them from kind of overrunning the galaxy with, with all of their evil deeds and things like that. So, uh, yeah, narrative in, in this one is, is definitely important. And uh, we want to make sure that that coincides um, in a very good way with our, our new gameplay and, and the things that fans have grown to love about the series. Marcus? Um, so starting off, um, would there be any interesting synergies and interactions between um, specific pop hunters during the co-op team play? Like we saw, like, most uh, she can call on the Iron Bear and then the demons can jump on the pirate. So are there any other interesting synergies or interactions between all the pop yeah, there's a few more things that we have up our sleeve on that. Uh, what you're talking, referring to is the Daka Bear augment that we have on Mose. So what she's allowed to do is she'll call on the Iron Bear. If you have that augment, it makes it to where she can use both of her hard points and her guns on her mech, but also a co-op partner can jump on the top and have a turret that they can use. Um, I think there's other ways that that's happening as well, like Zane being able to throw down his barrier. And 
the augments on his barrier, they can amplify damage or they can uh, give off you know, a health buff so that if you're, you're playing co-op, you have somebody next to you and the, they're gaining the benefit of what Zane puts down. And then things that are, that are more obvious like Amara's phase grabs, you know, she grabs an enemy and now that kind of focus fires and everybody can target that as well. So there's different mechanics like that. Okay, so uh, talking, you're talking, you're talking about characters, uh, more hunters, now let's talk about guns, right? So guns have been another staple in Borderlands, uh, Borderlands franchise. Uh, they, they, uh, they've gone from normal to crazy to super crazy. Uh, you know, right? Um, yeah, so moving on to Borderlands 3, there's going to be an exponentially larger number of guns uh, coming around this time around. Right? The designs have been even more um, ridiculous, I guess, as you can see. Right? We had the talking gun before, now we have a walking talking gun. <laughs> yes. we, have a, we have a sword that shoots, uh, we have a gun that shoots swords, that shoots multiples, uh, multiple more swords. Uh, so yeah, uh, how important was the design process, uh, or rather how important was the design aspect for you guys uh, in terms of, of coming up with the, the different types of guns? Um, how challenging was it for you guys to, to come up with something that was uh, just literally out of this world? And some of these designs that, that you come up with, uh, were they initial designs that you wanted to bring into earlier games? Uh, then uh, you scrapped them and what decided to bring them into to the later games. Uh, how was that all? Uh, how did all? How did that all work out for you guys? So that's always a thing that, that we think about, right? Like ideas are always constantly coming. And a lot of that stuff comes from the team. It comes from. Um, us interacting with each other, people being like, oh, hey, I have a really good idea, or, oh, what if? And, you know, a lot of our, our guns start in that, that type of way, a lot of things that we do, and we kind of, you know, get in a room and huddle together and you know, bounce things back and forth with each other and come up with some of these crazy ideas like that. Uh, there's certainly things that we've wanted to do in the past or things that um, we are thinking about that we could do in the future. and. and so a lot of that comes together whenever we're actually in there building the game, right? Um, the challenge with, with making all of the different guns is um, you know, finding the, the right touch to actually mix with that gameplay and mix with those vault hunters. Like you said, there's, there's different guns that do different things. We have guns that shoot hamburgers. Uh, we have um, the guns with legs that, that bounces, or, or we have one that, that's a TDR that sticks and it's a turret. You know, there's all these different things, but all of those go into the way that you're playing the game too. You can set up those different combat pockets in, in that way, knowing how those guns interact. Um, we have the Atlas guns for the first time in this, in this game, where you can actually apply a tracker dart and now your smart bullets and go hide around the corner and kind of shoot and, and it'll tackle them. So there's different things like that. And if you saw the, the newest trailer, we have a gun that shoots guns. So I think that's kind of like the most meta thing that we could have done, you know. And there's just, the team is really great. Jimmy Barnett and his team uh, on the art team, Jet Red and, and those guys who all work with guns, they, they have so much passion and dedication um, to building on top of the foundation that we've already laid down throughout the series. And we're, we're always trying to top ourselves, you know. Um, one of the things I like to say is that, you know, we either get better or we get worse. You never stay the same. So you have to constantly be trying to get better with everything that you do each day. And that's that, that kind of embodies the team at Gearbox and at Frisco and in Quebec. We're trying to build on what we've done before and kind of work together and, you know, expand on these different types of gameplay and characters and the guns themselves. So that being said, does the, does the Tic Tac ever run dry? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. You, there's all kinds of whiteboards all over the place that have random script. It's funny because we'll walk into a meeting and see something just randomly written on the on the dry board, and uh, we just know well, somebody was in here thinking of ideas about something that has to mean something. It's really random, but it, it has to mean something because yeah, we're we're always thinking about things, and, and we have our, our different channels where we're kind of grouping together and oh, hey, what have we thought about this? Or, hey, let's try and do this thing. Um, you know, we have so many people at the studio and great ideas come from everywhere. We take it from, you know, from the front desk support all the way up to, you know, Randy himself. Everyone has an, a, a different ideas and different opinions and they all matter to us. Uh, Andy, I just uh, actually have like, two questions. Uh, the first being, you were talking about <coughs> players being able to send gifts or items to other players or friends that they'll like 
if there would be any chance of them sending something to their buddy that they've messed with since elementary high school that they may not appreciate. <laughs> well, hopefully there's nothing in the game that people don't like, right? Um, but yeah, you can send whatever. You know, that, that goes with uh, grenades and um, uh, different, uh, like, shields and things like that, too. So maybe if there is one that has a has some type of uh, a debuff on it or some type of... Uh, uh, dynamic change that can happen if you if you do a thing uh, then you can kind of stick it in there and maybe maybe it'll get past and we'll be like oh yeah there's a lot of health on this oh but it explodes and hurts me whenever it happens or something like that i don't know how many hours that we've talked about um it it's much bigger than borderlands 2 i'd say that uh there's all different types of side missions there's the main mission of course um, but then there's other things like all of the different challenges that we have like the rare spawns and the enemy hunts and um, the crew challenges, and things like that. Like, there's so much to do in the game. I, I can't express enough all of the things that you're able to do. And that's just, you know, the different mission type things that you can do. But there's also exploration or, you know, boss running and different things like that. So there's a ton of content on day one. It, it's the same answer. We are in a streaming, YouTubing, live culture, right? So it's the balance of hitting that and making it right but also not being too over the top that, you know, the people who we love, the people that they're based on, uh, are kind of taken aback by that, right? Like, well, we're not we're not making fun of all streamers or, or all YouTubers. We're just saying there are some, and the influence that these guys have, um, they're taking it too far to the left um, and making it to where they're, they're trying to take over the galaxy now, and they're actually trying to recruit and broadcast and bring in and unite all the banded clans so that they can come together for evil streaming deeds. Uh, uh, my question will be, I'm uh, still with the Vault Hunters. Uh, we know that the Vault Hunters each have their own unique playstyle and strengths. So does it mean that some of the Vault Hunters will, will work better in single player mode while others are more suited for the co-op play? No, I don't think so. Um, because now we have the multiple action skills, there's not really a, a way to say, well, this one works just in co-op or, or works much better in co-op. Um, even with things like, you know, I was talking earlier about Zane's shield. Well, you can drop it down and it does have a lot of benefits for co-op, but also you can pick his shield up and run and shoot behind it. So that works very well if you're playing solo. Um, but no, we want to make sure that people can play literally any way that they want. So they, they can make their Vault Hunters the way that they want. They can um, style them and customize them the way that they want, and they can play solo or cooperatively, and it still works uh, just as good. There's a lot of things that, that we plan on doing with, with in-game content, and if you played any of the, the like Borderlands, then you you know, you kind of have an idea of where we're going. But there's not really anything that we want to talk about today about in-game or post-launch DLC or, or anything like that, because we're really focused on making sure that we have the most polished experience that we possibly can when we launch on September 13th. Um, I don't know too much about the accessibility. Um, uh, I know that we have ser several different options, several different modes that the guys uh, on the game field team, like we kind of, we actually have our own um, department within the department that kind of works on accessibility because it's really important to um, But as far as the newcomers coming into the series, um, it's a first person shooter. If you've ever played a first person shooter game, then, um, then you'll feel right at home. We, we, there's uh, the recruitment uh, walkthrough that we did uh, with Claptrap at the beginning at the Game Reveal event about a month ago. Um, we want to make sure, you know, in that, what you guys saw was us kind of stepping people through and showing them, hey, here's the new things, here's how, um, here's how to play the game, here's the mission system, here's how to follow the map. Oh, look, we have sliding and mantle. Check that out. Here's how you can do um, the aim switch, you know, in, in the aiming modes. Um, so it, we, we want to make sure that even if you if you've been here since 2009 or you're playing for the first time in 2019, that you can pick the game up and understand that we're giving you everything that you need to be successful and really enjoy the experience. There's a there's a little bit of both. There's there's a few different things now. You know, in the past you would use Iridium and buy things from Crazy Girl. That's not the only reason that she used it. We really wanted that tight gameplay and gun feel and combat, right? And the team has worked really hard at getting it to where things feel feel really good whenever you're you know, shooting from the hip and whenever you're aiming down sight. Um, 
but there's, you know, I guess to go back to your earlier question, we wanted to make sure that people who are playing this game for the first time feels really good to them as well. Um, and then uh, things like uh, progressing on the characters, you know, we've added sliding, dismantling, and now butt stomp is back in this, or, or the, you know, and so there's different ways for you to attack um, different combat pockets. So. You, know, you don't have to just take enemies on head on. We have destructible cover. We have um, the different destructible burial barrels that um, kind of interact. So there's so many different ways for you to tackle a combat space. You can run through and slide behind a cover, or you can mantle up on top and kick a barrel over. Um, and then those, even those things interact with other things like shock barrels interact with water, and fire barrels interact with oil. Um, there's a lot of cover that is destructible. So uh, since our, our enemies are a lot smarter and, and our AI is, is really tight in this game as well, even if those guys want to go and hide behind it, sometimes they might hide behind wood and we can just shoot through it and chop it up and still take them out. You're making it to where your gameplay is directed and there's only one choice, right? And that's how we want to do on Borderlands 3. We want you to be able to play with whoever you want, however you want, whenever you want. And doing it you know, the, the way that it was before, um, it was challenging. and, and so whenever we tackled Borderlands 3, we wanted to make sure that um, that wasn't an issue and that uh, with the addition of radiation, um, it's also a really cool element that we've added to, to kind of amplify that gameplay. Um, so now you can hit enemies and apply that damage over time, but then also if they're next to their buddies and they end up dying because of it, now it explodes and now they're all infected and they can go pass it on somewhere else. Uh, it's extremely important. That, that's that's kind of what we've been talking about ever since we uh, announced and, and showed the things at the gameplay reveal event and, and then now in our theater presentation is that uh, there's so many different options and it's because you know not everyone has this one kind of uh, archetype or this one feeling that they want to do you know even with with our vault hunters my amara will be very different from your amara be very different from the next person's amara, even in look and feel and place them out. And that was really important to us because um, that opens up um, the accessibility to that volume of people. There's more people that will play and that will be able to play and enjoy it because they feel, oh, I found a thing that really uh, sticks with me and, and resonates with me and, and the way that I play games now. Um, from the guns to the customization to the vault hunters, there's just so many different ways for it, uh, you to be able to make that game the way that you want to play it your personal experience. Uh, I would assume that she does, um, and um, I like to call her not so tiny team. But yes, uh, she's she's in, the, she's in the game. She's uh, she's always been a fan favorite. You know, we we love her, and uh, really excited that she's in Borderlands Three.